fun, everyone. Sounds like that sounds like a good topic, though. It sounds like there's something going on with uh, adding a picture, a PDF of something to a sample. We can yeah. talk about that if you guys want. Sorry, y'all. I didn't realize I'd muted, and then when I joined, it unmuted. And sorry about that. But yeah, no, you're no, you're good. Yeah, we'd like to hear more about your. But yeah, we we actually want to with the web and with the iPad. I'm we want to hear about it. <laughs> yeah, we want to hear about it. That's actually. Good thing I was talking about that, huh? <laughs> I, I Beth, I would have muted you if you were so it was you were it was actually <laughs> Sorry, really Beth. interesting. No, Beth, it was great. We and honestly, Beth, that's that's the feedback that we want to hear. Or if you have questions, or we we definitely want to hear that. Um, now I was just telling him that I kept trying to drag my PDF over and it wouldn't take it, and I finally figured out I had to convert my PDF, my multi-page PDF, to met four different JPEGs to get it over when I was doing it on the web because it would not take my PDF of my cert. Uh, I, I think we might have a solution for that. Let, we'll talk about that, Beth. We'll cool. bring that up in just a little bit. We'll find it now, Beth. See, Beth, aren't you so happy? We're off mute. We're going to help. We can help you now. You're actually um, making me so happy because I don't have very much to talk about today, and I've been struggling trying to think about what we could <laughs> talk about on the webinar. So I know Casey has a demonstration, but I don't have much. <laughs> I did see as soon as I saw your smile just light up less because I knew you were going to have something to talk about later. Um, so Les, did you want to table that for now? We can start with the demo and then get into that, or did you want to tackle that first? Um, let's just do it as part of the Q and A, so we can go ahead and tackle that now. Okay. Here, let me move my head here. It's back my way. It's the uh, overcast eclipse's fault. Yes. <laughs> I've, had, I've heard so many people blame things, computer problems, and everything on the eclipse today. So we're going to start with that too. <laughs> oh, well, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's having a great day. And um, we'll jump right into this. So we, uh, let me see if I can share my screen and we can get into the materials app so we can see if this will help. All right. My, uh, sorry, I, you know, you guys know I have too many screens. I don't know where I put stuff to get to the materials app. Okay, we're good. Everybody can see you. What's going on here? Good, Les. Okay. Um, let me just grab one of my old samples. There's no reason to create a new one. This one looks good. As long as I don't have one attached to it. Every time we get on the webinar, my bandwidth just will not keep up. There we go. Okay. Okay, good. I don't have any forms on this. So um I want to say, um, so we're talking about adding a certification to a sample, right? So let's just assume that I created the sample for a cert and it had the right test and all that on it. This is just an example. So some of our standard advice there would be that you um, create a new form that attaches to the sample, right? And then I think, Beth, maybe what you were doing was grabbing the supporting image form. And I'll do one of these. Yep. Yep. Okay. And that, that was our standard advice and, and still is. It's a good place to put certifications. And but but I usually follow that up with something new now. So that is a great place if you get one or two certifications. So you're in the field and they drop off a load of pipe and they give you one CD, that's a great way to do it. Um and I'm just showing everybody here what this thing looks like, which most of the people on the call probably know, but we'll get there eventually. And it's very simple. And so all it has is the add image. You would click that and grab something probably, and, and this would be the same on your iPad, uh, right? And so you could just grab a image. I don't know what this is. This is like a YouTube thumbnail or something, right? And complete. And, and that would be, pretend that is your certification, right? Not, not this picture here, but pretend that's your cert. And so that's pretty simple. And then we'll go back. But what are new... And I, okay, so that would be your supporting image form there. But in Beth's case, where you have a PDF, especially a multi-page PDF, we're going to use something different. 
So you're going to go in and select um, sample test result instead of supporting image. And the reason for that, if this will load, I can show you what that is. Now, this was not created specifically for this purpose. This was actually back when we thought we were losing Site Manager, when all of our servers were dying and we were trying to come up with something. This was originally created as kind of a stopgap way to just go in and enter test results into a sample ID. So if the lab, for some reason, Site Manager just died on us, right, and we couldn't use limbs, then um, the lab could actually do their test results in a spreadsheet or on a scratch pad, whatever they had, and then upload that to the thing and actually put a passing result or failing result here. But when you use this for a certification, um, I think this is only doing this because of the sample. So if you had uh, added the field global test, you could select that here and you could actually give it a pass, but this actually does nothing at this point because we never connected that to anything. But here's the big difference. So this one, you can add an image and you can also add a file. And so that is why we suggest this one. In fact, if you just want to switch over and use sample test result instead of supporting image form, so you're only using one thing, this would be the great option. And so add a file here, you can just grab a PDF, whatever you have um, and drop it right in there. And let's see if I have a PDF. I don't want to share my telework stuff. EEO certificate, this looks good. So um, it'll say file being uploaded. One little, I guess it's a little bug in here is this never stops saying that, but just know that it's there. So when you hit complete, you will see that your file gets added here. And so this is just an easy way to uh, upload multiple documents, you know, because a lot of times you get those when the contractor, they just email it to you instead of giving it to you in the field, right? And so you can just grab that from your email, drop it into here. And one of the cool things about it is it also, just like the supporting image form, I'm going to try to get into, hope that's in the test project, see if it actually added it. Yeah, a few seconds ago. So it actually adds the file observation to field book, just like the supporting image uh, form does here. So you can see this is the image I uploaded on there, and this is the file. So anyway, quick little demo of how that works there. Beth, did that help you? Did that, uh, you think that would be a better option for you all? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So just uh, remember, it's sample test result, and it works the same way, except you can drop a big file in there, and I think that'll help you out. Yeah, converting those things over to a bunch of PDFs, that's a lot of extra work that we don't need, so. All right. Any other questions? Beth, it's safe to say you just got Les's gold star and made made the entire webinar with that question yes, right. at the beginning. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're just going to start unmuting everybody at the beginning and listening to conversations, and that'll like that'll get us going. Kevin <laughs> Adams, you should be taking a deep breath. We we don't have to pick on you as much anymore. We will we'll let you stay on mute, Kevin. Um, but with that being said, did anybody else have any other questions or anything they wanted to anything they wanted to go over or bring up? I actually will say something, Casey, uh, and actually to to Beth on this get, uh, to expand on what Les was showing her is that on the big project that we have going on right now, we actually created a sample ID for the steel rebar because we're going to have plenty of steel on this project, and we created a one, excuse me, sample test result form. And as we're getting the mill cert the certifications in from the contractor, we're just going back to that form, adding a new file, adding a new file, adding a new file as we uh, go along. So that way they're all gathered together on that one form and that one sample ID and um, for this project. Thank, yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Kevin, because that is new advice that we started passing out after the training. And so you probably have not heard that as well. So you just have to have one sample ID, one form attached to it. And every time you get a cert from that same material, you just keep dropping it into dropping files in there. And that way, at the end of the job, what what's 
very beautiful about that is when the lab goes in to look at the 2059, the ATM 2059, they can go to that one sample and find, and find mm -hmm. all of the all right. So yeah, thanks for that, Kevin. Appreciate you reminding us there. Yeah, as long as everything's coming from the same uh, mill. It, it, yes, if you that's pay, right. If you've got a different producer supplier, right. you can't do that. That's right, yes, you're correct. Actually, you're right, yeah, yeah, you're right, Beth. So then you'd have to create a, a separate sample ID with a different producer supplier. But if it's all from the same one, uh, which is happening in our case, then you can just keep adding to it. Good point. Thanks, Beth. Appreciate that. All right, it's starting out great. Let's keep it going. It's, who's having issues? What's the status on adding the miscellaneous to the sample plan? So uh, that's a good question. So what Jimmy is talking about is when you add a miscellaneous category, it does not add, and, and Kevin Adams has brought this up before, it's not just miscellaneous, but when you add that miscellaneous, it does not add currently the individual materials that are associated with that. And so when the inspector goes to create the sample, they create the sample from the dashboard using the miscellaneous category, and then it'll ask to populate that with one of the specific materials. When you select the specific material, then it will not add a line item because that part's not in the sample plan. So it feels like a chicken and an egg kind of deal. Um, I did talk with Gabby about that. It must have been last week. So they are trying to figure out a good solution there. So hopefully uh, soon, Jimmy is the status. Anything else? Go ahead, Les. No, I think that's all I had with that one. Yeah, I have another thing we, we ran into with the lab, sampling stone, say for approach slabs in the sample plan, you know, if you put in the one per thousand frequency of one per thousand for the aggregate, it figures how many you need based off those square yards of approach slab. So the lab, so we were actually changing the frequency, you know, to make it match what we needed, the number of samples, but the lab wants us to leave it at one per thousand and change the conversion factor. So that's what we've started doing. Good luck. Yes, no, you're, that's, that's absolutely right. And that is the correct way to do it. Um, I, I agree that that's the correct way. Jimmy, you and I think alike because I always did what you did. I just changed the rate and frequency to make it spit out the numbers I wanted to spit out. The conversion factor, there's a lot of uh, math that's involved there. And honestly, I never took the time. I, I, it's probably not hard math from what I saw. But I never took the time to sit down and figure it out. So I, I well, know it's just I just put in a number, keep putting in a number till it works. <laughs> hey, that's the best way to do it. That that that's easy. So what what Jimmy is talking about there is when you have a sample that is based on. Let's see how to, how I can put this. It's based on cubic yard, so one per a thousand cubic yards, right? but the pay item is in square yards. And so there has to be a conversion there, right? To get the right number of samples. And so um, maybe we'll have to, I, I tell you what, I might have to recruit somebody who can come on and actually explain that. I, I know I have somebody, somebody in my mind that's really good at doing the conversion factors. Maybe I can recruit them to come on next month and give us a, <laughs> give us a good uh, example of how that works. Beth is probably really good at that. Maybe I can recruit her. She was not the one I was thinking of, but I bet she knows. I'll look to see if I still have my original spreadsheet from when we were programming site manager materials that has all of that. Oh, I see. I'm not sure if I took that with me when I left or not. That's what I love. Somebody who's got a spreadsheet that does it for you. That's even better. Oh, it doesn't do it for you. We we did it by hand when I had two PE, two lab engineers and Two PEs locked in a room for six months. 
Oh yeah. So that so now you know what the requirement is. You have to get three people, lock them in a room for six months, and you can figure out how to do conversion factors. Sounds good. Thank you for bringing that up, Jimmy. Though that is something that, I, and honestly, that is one of the things that you know as we've talked to Headlight about eventually automating a lot of the sample plan. I'm hoping that's one of the things that we can work in there. That would be fantastic if it can. Uh, you know, do those conversions for us in the background. There are a lot of smart people working on that that are really good at math and could probably make that happen. And so that's something we need to really consider when we get into that step. All right, so I think that's probably pretty good on questions. If somebody else has something, go ahead. But if not, last call, we'll let Casey get into what she was gonna discuss. All right, Casey, I'm, I'm just going to throw it all on you at this point. All right, Les. Hey, I, I do have to say that so far, I hope we keep the questions coming. I really do think this webinar made Les's day, and it's made mine so far. Um, yeah. So go ahead, Les. Uh, no, I, I had, okay. the only thing I was going to say, I will say one thing about that. You know, the original purpose for these webinars was that, it, you know, yes, there, there's great, um, it's great to get a little training on new stuff or even old stuff, you know, from KCRI, that kind of thing. But one of the things that I feel like is missing at DOTD, at least when I was an inspector, it was, is there's not, uh, I like the collaboration, right? Sometimes it's great to get on the call here and kind of discuss what the problems are and then everybody figuring out solutions that work, you know, for each of us, I think that's good. Instead of all of us, you know, we we get in our field unit, right, and we figure out ways to get the job done. But then that ends up being different from all fifty other or, or all other forty nine field units, and then it becomes a problem, you know, across the whole state. So the collaboration on here and actually discussing these things is really what we are after. So I I do enjoy it when we start talking about stuff like that. Thanks, Casey. No problem, Les. So guys, today for my demo, um, I'm gonna show everyone Headlight's new-ish iPhone app and it's called Fast Capture. So I'm actually gonna share my iPhone screen and I will will do the demo. Um, but if anyone wants to download the app um, prior to that, and you if you wanna follow along with me, go right ahead. So if you pull up your app store, it's you can type in Headlight Fast Capture and I'll give everybody a minute to download that if they do want to follow along. And while everyone's downloading, I just want to call out um, a few things. So the iPhone app is not meant to replace the iPads in any way. It was purposely built and designed to be really just a fast, faster way for those in the field to capture a smaller set of data. So not all observation types are available through the Fast Capture app, but it was designed that way. Um, so today, we're obviously, we will go through the ones that you can take on the iPhone. Um, and a few other call-outs, just while everyone's downloading the app, um, spreadsheets are not available on the iPhone app. So any of your spreadsheet observations, so your weather, your contract personnel, equipment, and your work items, that's all still going to be done on the iPad or the web, however you do it. Um, and nor will you have the ability to create reports. So at the end of the day, when you're ready to create your report, you're still going to use your iPad or the computer, however you create your report. So reporting and spreadsheet observations are not available on the app. Terry, I saw you came off mute. Did you have a question on that? Yeah, I was hoping you could give that um, app address again. Absolutely. So um, let me just pop that in the chat, Terry. So if you type in headlight fast capture to the app store. Jimmy or Kevin, were either of you downloading it? Were you able to download it? Is I it have only Android? Yeah, oh, is it only Jimmy. iPhone? <laughs> yes, it is only iPhone. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Kevin, um, if anyone else is having any trouble downloading the app, feel free to come off mute or pop something in the chat. Um, so if there's no questions on the spreadsheets or reporting, um, a couple more things. I'll just give everyone a few more seconds to get the app downloaded. Um, 
observations that you take on the iPhone are going to sync to the iPad and they'll sync to the web as well. But any observations that are taken on the iPad or Fieldbook web will not sync to your iPhone. So the only observations that are going to be on your iPhone are the ones you took on your iPhone. Um, it's just a one-way sync to the iPad and the computer. Nothing will sync back. Um, so I just want to be clear on that. Did anyone have any any questions on that? Saving all your questions for less. Um, and then a couple more things. Um, obviously, one of the main benefits of Fieldbook and Headlight is the search feature. Um, so really anything for searching, you're still going to want to use the iPad or Fieldbook web. You're not really going to be able to search on the iPhone app. So anything that you're searching or trying to look up past data, you still want to use your iPad or the computer for that. Um, and then lastly, um, the credentials that you'll use for the Fast Capture app are going to be the same that you would use on your iPad or to log into Fieldbook on the computer. So it's the exact same. Those credentials will get you access um, on the iPhone app. So any questions or any issues downloading the app so far? I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Okay, so this probably looks pretty similar to the field book on the iPad users. Um, you have your login screen here. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in with my credentials here. And so this is the inside of the Fast Capture app. If you see at the top of my screen, whereas on the iPad, your user initials or your user menu are on the right side. On the Fast Capture app, if you see my initials KL, they're in the top left-hand corner. Um, so there are your, that's your user menu. Um, you should recognize that sync icon over in the far right-hand corner. So if you ever need to force a sync uh, on the Fast Capture app, you can click that sync button in the top right-hand corner. Um, and then if you see in the middle of my screen, the name of the project that I'm on is the US 190 project. Um, it's going to function the exact same as it would on the iPad or the computer. All the projects that you have access to and you can how you change projects on the iPad, you can do the same thing on your iPhone. So I just added myself to this project just to show if you double tap that, um, you can switch between projects here. So for the demo today, I'm just going to stick to our trustee training project. Um, but this is how you would switch between projects on the iPhone app. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the training project. Um, and back to our trustee green plus. So it's the same thing you would see on the iPad. If you're following along, you can click that green plus. And these are all the different observation types that you can take on your iPhone. So like I said before, not all observation types are available here, but you are able to take pictures, videos, narratives, weather observations, you can upload files, and you can also take that uh, the start stop work observation. So I'm just going to start from the bottom here and I'll start with a photo observation, but any questions so far? Okay, so oops, someone come off mute. Oh. All right, so the first observation type I'm going to take is just a picture. So I'm going to go ahead and click that photo button. My camera will come up. Um, I'm just going to choose to allow full access. And so for this, I'm just going to take a picture of my computer here. And then you can see this is the interface. So there's my picture. And right below that, where you see it says no photo right here, this is the title of your observation. So exactly how it is on the iPad. You're able to title the image observations exactly how you would on the iPad. So I'll just title here, give it a quick title, Casey's desk. Scrolling down further, you see the description. So it's that same description field that you would see on your iPad. Um, that description field is a free entry field. So in here, I will just type something 
And then if you keep scrolling down, you'll see that everything is still, it's dated and timestamped, just like it would be on the computer or the iPad. You're still able to input your station and your offset information. And then all of the tags and the labels are here as well. So to add tags, if you click on that, these are all the same tags. So it's exactly the same as it is on the iPad. Um, so I'll just go through here and I'll, I'll select drainage. To add that tag, just click done in the top right hand corner. And then the same would apply for the contractor line item and equipment. So if I wanna select my contractor here, I click that green plus and let's say I'll select ECM here, click done. If I need to add my line item, I can do that here. And similar to the iPad, um, you are able to search. So if you click in here, you can search. Um, you can search for the item. You could type in the number or if there's a word or the name, you can type that in too. So I'll select this 0010 item. Done. And then if I needed to select any equipment, I can come in here, I could select, you are able to select multiple tags just like you can on the iPad. Um, and then again, everybody should be familiar with the geolocation, um, but everything is again, similar to the iPad, it's all geolocated. Um, so if I scroll through here and I have everything I need, I can click save. And then that observation now saves to my newsfeed on my phone. So any questions on taking an image through Fast Capture? Okay. I think uh, just to call out here, you know, I know we hear from inspectors in the field sometimes they forget their iPad in the truck or it's, you know, the iPad, your iPhone, if you have it, Kevin or Jimmy, is probably always in your back pocket. Um, so in those cases that you do forget your iPad in your truck or, you know, you just have to you know, go take a picture quickly, that's really where the iPhone app is gonna come into play. Um, so taking pictures, I think will be great on the iPhone app for everyone. Um, the next observation that I wanna get into, I'm gonna come back to that green plus is our narratives. Um, video is gonna function the exact same as the image. Um, my desk is a little messy, so I won't take a video to embarrass myself on a recorded call. Um, but so the next observation type I'm going to get into is narrative. Um, so for those in the field, you're probably familiar with those seven narratives that you are required to take every day. So you are able to do those on the iPhone app as well. Um, so let's say this narrative here, let's say this is my work hours narrative. So I could say work hours eight to four. Oops. So hours, um, if we're in line with what we're doing on the iPad, we would still title that narrative. So I would title that work hours here. Um, everything again is dated and timestamped. And then for my tag here, this is where I would select that work hours, that mapping tag. Um, scrolling down here, you know, it doesn't really apply to this work hours narrative, but you are of course, still able to add that contractor line item or equipment tag. Um, again, everything is dated and timestamped and you do have your geolocation. Um, that is how you would create a narrative observation. So any questions on narratives or pictures so far? Okay. So the next observation type I wanna demo is the weather. Um, so that fourth one down on my list here, weather. So this is exactly how you would take a weather observation um, on your iPads. Uh, it pulls in from your nearest NOAA weather station. You'll get your conditions, the temperature, the precipitation, wind speed, humidity. Um, for those of you that do title your weather observations in field book, AM or PM weather, you're still able to do that here. So if I want to title this, AM weather, I could do that. I could add a description if I needed to. Again, you see your date and timestamp information and you could add any applicable tags to that observation. And then two more um, that I just wanted to go over for files. You are able to upload files just like you can on your iPads or the computer. 
Um, I actually don't have any files on my iPhone. Um, so I don't have one to upload here, but you are able to upload files. So if anyone does that currently on the iPad or the computer, you'll have that same functionality built into the iPhone app. Um, and then the last observation type that I wanna show here is that start, stop, work observation type. Um, so if I click start, stop, work here, um, again, exactly the same as the iPad, you can input the start time. Um, so it's 11.32 for me, um, I'm an hour ahead, but and then you could change the stop time. So again, it functions the exact same that it would on the iPad or the computer. Um, so let's say I'm timing something that lasted eight minutes. It'll give you the duration. You could title that. So I'll say Casey's demo. You could add a description. And again, same as before, you have all your date and your time information, any applicable tags, and then you have your geolocation. So I will go ahead and save that. Um, so those are all the observation types that you can take on the iPhone. Does anyone have any questions or does anyone want to see any of that again? No? Les, they're saving all their questions for you. Good. <laughs> Not good for you. <laughs> Um, was anybody able to create observations on their iPhone? Would this ever be available for Android? Jimmy, at this time, I don't believe we're, we're developing an Android app. Um, so I, as of right now, I would say no. I think the main focus now would, would be the iPhone app. Um, but we do hear you on that. You're definitely not the only one that's asked. Um, so if there are more updates on that, we'll definitely keep you guys posted. I do. I will say this, Jimmy. They, Headlight does have another app um, called Smart Forms, and we don't utilize it currently, but I think it has a lot more uh, features that involve Android. This, this app, because it... Um, is a companion app to the iPad, I think it probably would have to be um, iOS. And I think that's why they're probably not considering Android. And this, you know, it's just like we said, a companion app. And so the main deal here and the reason it was probably created is, you know, sometimes you're, you know, especially some of the inspectors across the U.S. that, that use headlight, they're hanging off of some kind of uh, structure trying to take a picture of something on a bridge or you know and so having that one hand availability right to hold that iPhone out there and get the picture that's really what this cre was created for but it actually works great for even just um, observations in the field as an inspector when you don't have your iPad handy now we recommend keeping that iPad with you all day. Like I know I did, I, I utilized the shoulder strap and just kind of carried it with me as I was going. Um, I have found that a lot of DOTD inspectors just do not like to carry the iPad with them for whatever reason. In, fa in fact, if there's something on here, could you tell me the reason? Like, you know, if you if you don't like carrying it, like what is the problem? Is it just too big or, or what's going on with that? Because um, that's, Having that thing with you so you can grab those geolocations at the moment you're making the observations is important. But also, you know, you know, one of the beauties of headlight, at least when I was an inspector, the thing that I loved is not having to remember stuff, right? Because I guess I was getting a little older and couldn't, I didn't have the memory I had when I first started working here. And so when I would um, have my iPad with me and something happened, I would add that observation right at the point of it happening and then I didn't have to keep it in my mind for later that day when I got back to the truck to type it into the iPad so um but I use I I'll just tell you this I use fast capture at least a couple times a week in my office even though my iPad's sitting here just because uh, you know when I'm I document our iPad stuff so when I ship out iPads or I ship out accessories to you all, it's very easy for me to just grab my phone and take a picture of that so that we have record of where that stuff is going. And so I use Fast Capture all the time. I think it's a great companion to, uh, you know, your iPad. So I would suggest trying it if you're, you know, in the field trying to do some observations. 
and along those lines, Les, definitely we encourage everybody to try it and we want your feedback on it. I know we're always saying we want your feedback, um, but we definitely want to hear how it goes, if it's easier to use for certain things. Um, so please do definitely share your feedback with us once you get to use it. Thanks, Casey. Well, and I guess with that, did anybody else have any questions or anything they wanted to see, anything that's been going on? Oh, Kevin was about to say something. Go ahead, Kevin. <laughs> I can tell you, Jimmy, that if I didn't have my iPad with me and I had just my phone, I'm an Android user, I've taken pictures and just emailed them to myself so that way I can upload them later to Headlight. Yeah, yes, sir. I've done that also. I've recently made the switch. So I was an Android user forever. And I recently made the switch to an iPhone. And I do like the compatibility with headlight stuff here. But, you know, Android, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Android's still superior. So sorry, iPhone <laughs> users. I love, I, look, I love my iPhone. I do. It's great. But I'm still on a, team Android. So it's <laughs> less. If Les didn't have an iPhone now, guys, I would I wouldn't have done the fast capture demo. I would have had to pick another topic if he didn't support it. Um, so I'm as soon as I knew a couple months ago that Les had the iPhone app, we've been planning this. We just had to get him to like iPhones more and more over the past couple months. He's finally come around. So I guess I'll jump in. I don't have like a full on demo of stuff. Um, but I do have a couple updates. And so uh, those of you who got the newsletter and had a chance to look through it, you might have noticed we are planning another round of meetings with the districts, this time including, including contractors. So it is very similar to the meetings that happened kind of before I was involved in all this. Um, it's uh, We're actually rebranding. I think it used to be called Shade Tree Meetings, but the rebranding, they're called Construction Roundup. And so um, those will start actually this week. We'll be heading out on Thursday to District 3 and 07 is joining us in District 3. And so um, some of the uh, main point or actually the main point of this is, um, at least at the beginning, is to do some change order training. So there are, are kind of not training, but realignment, right? So you know, things over the years can get off. And like I said earlier, we start doing things different ways. And so it makes it difficult, especially on our area engineers up here who are trying to get those things processed through. Um, so there have been a few templates that have been created that give you, you know, for these certain type of change orders, they give you a very structured way that you should be submitting that information. And then it'll also be great having the contractors in the room so that we can um, kind of get them the information they need, like, hey, this is what you should be submitting so that the PE or their representative can be entering that stuff here. And it makes the whole process flow a little better, right? When And get those change orders through because, you know, it, it, it takes a while to get one approved. And so we want to try to make that as efficient as possible. And that's the main point of those meetings. And then, you know, the second half of the meeting, because they are scheduled, I believe, eight to three. So they're long all day meetings and the second half after lunch will be kind of updating um some of the stuff going on at headquarters and each section like there there's an e-construction update where we'll just kind of tell you what we've been doing and kind of what um you know anything that we're seeing that we might need to improve on or that we're doing well and hopefully we'll get to the e-construction stuff because we're scheduled to be last and it, you know these things can turn into long discussions so be looking for those. Um, another big push, and I know we've said this a couple of times, but um, I talked to Matt Jones this morning, who is our new administrator in construction, and you know wanted me to mention that we are really trying to, uh, I don't know how to say this the best way, like we really need to utilize sample plan and materials, especially the dashboard. So we, uh, you know, we are trying to move towards um, using the dashboard as the indicator of project health and not the 2059. And the reason, or uh, ATM, I, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to say ATM and 2059 because those, 
you know, it's, it's hard for people to get to the new term there, but the reason we are trying to move towards that, the main reason is, you know, we get audited pretty often. And when they audit just the 2059 ATM, a lot of times it looks like we're not doing the QA, right? Because it's late or whatever the issue is, it's been on the late list, not turned in. And that's the only information that that auditor is looking for, right? But that's not accurate. We are actually doing the QA throughout the project. And so that's what we want to start pointing those auditors to like, hey, you have access to headlight. You can go in and look at this dashboard and the dashboard is going to tell you that for this particular um, line item, we were supposed to sample these four things. And these are how many of those that we need. And this is how many we've collected so far. Now, that being said, that won't solve all the problems, right? Because there are going to be times where we are behind in the dashboard, like we missed the sample or those kind of things. So I was kind of thinking through that this morning and just this is just suggestions for PE offices who are trying to deal with that and keep up with it. Um, in my opinion, I feel like it would be a good practice to start taking a look at those dashboards the day after estimate, like the next work day, right? So when you pay an estimate, um, and even if it's on a Friday and you come back in Monday, just try to make a schedule so that, hey, let me review this dashboard or, or have one of your representatives in your office that, that does this, right? Look through that dashboard and say, okay, according to what we paid last month or what we paid to this point, right, we need to get these samples this week. And then being able to provide those inspectors with that, you know, that data saying, hey, you have four samples you got to grab this week. I feel like that's going to drive compliance a lot better. If we're able to do that. I know as an inspector, really all, everybody on the call, you know, we're all busy, but as an inspector, trying to remember everything that I was doing and then remember to go back and get samples was always tough, right? Because there's a lot going on. We just, you know, I, I understand that, you know, projects get really busy and and, and sometimes those samples get left left in the background right and so those reminders you know i think help out so that's just a suggestion i have there but you know if you're going to be in one of those meetings we'll talk about that more uh hopefully when we're there um, hey, uh, do you know at, at this time does fifth floor take electronic versions of the 2059 or not so much are we accepting those is that what you're asking david yeah yeah Yes, even though our audit team probably doesn't know that, but yes, we are accepting those. So if if somebody, in fact, we have, there are at least two or three that I know of that are about to show up here that are going to be all digital, probably except for, you know, there are some other things that our audit section requires, like um, the correspondence can all be um, digital, they might not have all of the, uh, what do you call them, when you have to get, there's paper you have to get when, I don't know, something to do with all the aggregate that's left over from the job. Uh, Kevin Adams, you might be able to help me with this, like when the contractor, certificate of release, that's what it is. So you have to get certificate of releases and, and um, you know, those can be uploaded to headlights or that can be digital. Um, so yes, we are accepting at least almost fully digital um, project deliveries in the labs. Um, and I think really this is to your question with the ATM specifically. Yes, we are accepting those. We have a couple, two or three that are in the labs right now that are being looked at. And I'm trying to be available there so that I can help those labs uh, do that. I know Jimmy's lab up in 08, they have started looking at how to start incorporating those and start accepting those digitally. We've got the signatures, I think, fixed so that the PE can sign and that the district lab engineer can sign that. And so, um, and even probably one important step that is on the headlight side currently is we have a ticket open where we want to hyperlink all of the sample IDs in the ATM document that they have, like so in the form, that is not necessarily something for the inspector side or the PE side, that is something for the lab side. I mean, it would, it would benefit 
you know, the construction side as well, but the, the lab being able to just go in, look at the ATM and say, oh, I need to dig in deeper here and click that hyperlink to get to the sample and the form where the information was filled out, I think will make the review process for them go way faster. And so that's something, you know, Headlight has been looking at that for a couple of weeks now. And um, I think basically- We have a unique question for you on this Seymour job. Okay. Oh, uh, as you know, it's, it's wrapped up in these early work packages, right? Yep. And there's several. Now, in theory, it's one project number. So there's one ATM 2059. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll die saying 2059. Understood. Uh, now, but in headlight, it is broke out. Each EWP is broke out in, in materials everywhere it's broke out. So how are we going to combine these or can we send these in per EWP, which I don't think is a possibility. So I'm kind of like, how am I going to pull this rabbit out of the head? That's a unique case, David. Yeah. You're going to have to basically submit each EWP as its own package, but as one big package. Well, if I and do it, Electronically, how do I do that electronically if it's all going to be wrapped up in headlight? We'll we'll probably choose one as a primary contract number and use that as the acceptance for it. Yeah, we'll I'm, work with you. We'll work with you when you get there because this is the only contract doing that. So this yeah, is yeah. this is a unique case. Yeah. Well, yep. Yep. It, it, it's a uh, it's an odd bird for sure. I actually have probably a solution for that already, David. So you do those um, each one of those individually. And on the final one, which will likely, I would guess, be the biggest one, right? That would be the acceptance one. Then because the headlight ATM accepts the documents, you can actually put the old signed ATMs into the latest one, right? And so then they're all in one place. Okay. And I think that would actually probably now, solve that. You, you, we'll, we'll talk after this. You're going to have to tell me how to do that. Here, no, no, let's, let's talk about it right now. We can show you. Okay. I love this. I like to just dive in and do stuff so, on the fly. I've technically got one on ready topic. now. I got uh, EWP1. Uh, it's actually old school and a binder, but I'm like, man, I don't want to go that route. Let me get out of this and see if I can actually, I might be able to. So you have a, um, have you created the, the form in headlight already, or are you just saying you got yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, man, I got so many forms in there. Jeez. I know I have. Let's see. Let's look at it. 4100. It, which one is it? One? Uh, yeah, I've done one. Now, I did it old school, but I'm like, okay. And it, it is pretty thin. It ain't much to it. Yeah, that one was that seemed like it was gonna be pretty simple. So let's see. Let's see. Okay, LED. Let's TV. see. Yeah, there's one. It's like Terry has one here. Um, let me go to fill out four. And I that one may be incomplete. Oh, uh, Steve Parody made me go old school, and I did it kicking and screaming. So I'm just, you know, it it doesn't matter. This might even be one that you just created just to look at it. But what yeah. I'm kind of saying is, is once you say you you had, you know, three other early works packages that right. were done and the signatures were here, right? And this is the final one. So what I'm saying is, is all you would have to do is add file, grab the old ATM and oh. drop it here. And so then you would have, you know, three signed and completed ATMs from other early works packages in the latest one. And then this one gets this one signed and it's made that would, the document. You you would uh to sign that, uh pardon my ignorance here. Now is that electronic signature or I gotta print it, sign it, and scan it back in? It actually it actually goes off of submissions here and it's electronic. So I okay. probably have an action to do here. So whoever is actionable on this can um so it can be submitted, right? And then when when it's submitted, it'll like put that person's name here and it goes off oh, of ID. And All then right. The district lab engineer, so um, 
which I don't, I guess that's Barry Moore for y'all. Yeah. yeah. He, could, he, could, he actually is trying to sign a couple of them right now. And so when he would go in here to review it, it would put his name here. Now, I will say this, in the background, Headlight, um, in their work that they are doing on contract administration software, have also started providing us some more robust user management system. And that's really going to make this process more efficient. And by the time that you get there, um, especially to the end of that, it should the all that should probably be in place. And then it would only give the list of people who are available to sign this. So, you know, we're clicking along and I want to pull this particular one that's now signed into a further EWP. So I'm going to add file. I'm, I'm going to pull this one. So when I add file, is it adding that sheet? or is adding that sheet and all of these samples. So, so when, and this is another good example of why having the uh, sample IDs hyperlinked. So let me show you, not failing sample. So it should be this one, I think. So when this becomes a hyperlink to this sample, so let me, let me try to explain this a different way. So I think that what we would probably be doing is instead of at the end of this, just dropping the document in here is maybe, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to think through this as I'm saying it. So yeah. having the document there is good, but that would not do the hyperlinks. And so being able to drop the hyperlink from the signed document somewhere in here too, even if it's a separate document that you put in here with the hyperlinks connects it all together if yeah. that makes sense at all, right? So uh, I will say this, it's not something, for, because that's such a unique case, I, I don't think it's something you have to worry about right now. Yeah. Just know that we'll we'll be able to, we'll be there to help you put all that together at the final one. But, you know, yeah. and you what, we're, one of our goals, what we're trying to do here in it, uh, for this job is I want to send in, you know, a partial, if you will, 2059, get the lab to approve each EWP so that, hey, when we're through with this thing, I, they're not going through a six-foot stack of material, per se. Each EWP has already been looked at by the lab. Yeah. It is kind of my, my, my thinking on this. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Go ahead and send it like that because they'll probably accept it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because there, there will be nothing more added to that project and they can basically close out that phase of it for yeah. that individual EWP. Like yeah. I said, th this is a unique case. So yeah. let's just, just let's talk it out. And and I don't know if we need to discuss this with everybody because it's just a, a unique thing, but we'll, we'll definitely work with you on getting all this done. Roger that. Right, Kevin. But guys, if I could say something on that, David, I used to work I started off before I became a project engineer. I was actually a tech in District 02 lab. And I can tell you that we did run into some large projects in 02 like that right there where they were able to submit a partial 2059. So that way, if one stage of the project was completely finished, um, then the lab was able to review just that one area and get... Yeah material acceptance on that one area um so you know that was acceptable yeah it, I it believe just kind of streamlines the final turn-in package yep yeah and, and david i also think the same way you do like turning those individual things in actually streamlight streamlines it it's easier for you to manage right because you're closing out the part that's already done. It's easier for the lab to manage that smaller piece of the puzzle, right, as they approve that. And then in those same lines, let, let's kind of refer that back to regular projects that all of our PEs and inspectors that are on the on this call that are doing. That, that same workflow should be implemented in your office, right? You should be breaking this off. And that's kind of why I was suggesting earlier, maybe once a month going in and, and reconciling all those samples. After the estimate, go in, run that ATM report and see where you're at so that you can reconcile that report and you're breaking it off in monthly pieces instead of what normally happens because we're overworked, right? We get, these projects get so busy and so fast paced 
that you get to the end of the project and you're like, oh, we should have sampled this six months ago and that was too late. And so then it ends up being an error in emissions instead of being able to be captured back when it happened. And so you know, I think that trying to set apart the time to manage that monthly instead of waiting to the end, although I know it's difficult because we have so much to do, but that would would pay big dividends on getting your projects uh, delivered on time, you know, and get, get some of us off those late lists, you know. So we, you know, we try to keep up with all our sampling and headlight pretty religiously, if you will. Yeah. Uh, so that when these EWPs end, I can just kind of wrap them up, send them to the lab, uh, let Barry cuss me for a little while and approve them. <laughs> I got you. All right. So for not having anything to say, I said a lot today. And I'm sorry about that. I know you guys get tired of listening to it, but I think it's good. So, well, you know, a couple minutes left. Any last minute questions? I do want to mention one quick thing, and we're not going to. Hey, Les? Yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, I have. A, maybe it's more of a statement, or maybe it's something I've already covered in the past, but we've noticed that. Um, I guess myself as a reviewer of Headlight Diaries or uh, our office manager, I think we have certain credentials in Headlight where that we can review, but we've also noticed that we can edit an inspector's daily work report. And I'm not sure if there's a record that we have edited and then we can then review it. And then it syncs to site manager as if it's that inspector's daily work report. And it kind of seemed, I don't think you can do that in site manager. That kind of seemed like it could be problematic. I don't know if y'all were aware of that or if we're doing something wrong. Yes, I knew that you could edit it with those credentials. I did not know that it that it updated with the inspector's login. That could be problematic. I will say I know for a fact that Headlight has a an auditable record that we could call upon if we needed. So just, you know, throwing this out there, like if something were to go to court and we wanted to know who made those change, Headlight keeps a very detailed record of that. And so it would not get lost. But I see what you're saying there. That probably is something we need to look at um, not happening that easily on that end. So, yeah, we'll take a look at that, Mark. I, I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, I think we can like edit their observation, like their comments and stuff. And it's still their observation. And that may be the if we could change that or I don't know if we could add a comment to an observation as a different user. I don't, I don't know. But yeah. I appreciate it. Wanted to let you know. Yeah. Thank you for that. That, that definitely needs to be, um, needs to be looked at. Yep. All right. So uh, the one last thing I was going to say is, uh, and, and we're not going to do a full introduction today, but I wanted to say that you probably saw a new face on the call today, Tranesha, and it looks like she's coming on off the camera now. And Tranesha, we're not going to ask you to say anything, but Tranesha is our new CSM and very new. So we'll do a full introduction next month, but I just wanted you to see her face. And if she wants to say hi, that's that's fine. But I don't want everybody on here sending her emails yet. She's, <laughs> we're going to hold off on that kind of stuff. <laughs> just bombard me and Casey and we will include her. How about that? Sounds good. Thank you so much, Les, for the introduction. And hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to meet you all. And I look forward to seeing you all in person. Uh, as Les mentioned, my name is Trenisha Marcelin Burks, and I'm definitely a native Louisianian. So I look forward to meeting you all, maybe enjoying some good food every now and then and uh, working together. So it's a pleasure again. And uh, hopefully we'll chat soon. Thanks, Trenisha. And welcome. Great. Welcome. All Thank right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate y'all jumping on this morning. I appreciate the uh, discussion. It was really great today. So y'all have a good rest of your day. Thank you, Beth, so for much, starting Beth. us off. Let me. Yeah, thanks, yes. Beth. Shout out to Let Beth. Me. Thanks, Beth. All right. Bye, guys.